and, and, and to do airstrikes if that's what they're called on to do. Kerry spoke on a CBS TV program that aired on Sunday and said some nations have offered to commit their troops to the effort. We're not looking to put troops on the ground. Uh, there are some who have offered to do so, but we are not looking for that at this moment anyway. Kerry rejected any possibility of coordinating airstrikes with the Syrian government, but said Syrian opposition forces will play a role in the fight against the Islamic State. Kerry has been traveling throughout the Middle East to build a coalition to fight the militants. Foreign ministers from countries including the U.S. and Britain will meet in Paris on Monday to discuss how to deal with IS. The ceasefire between Israel and Hamas has given Gaza residents the chance to return their lives to normal. That includes children who went back to school on Sunday. The conflict lasted nearly two months and left many schools seriously damaged. Work to repair and recover the buildings delayed the start of the school year by three weeks. About 500 girls attended school in Shijaya in eastern Gaza. Some of its buildings and grounds were damaged. Students were happy to meet their teachers and friends who survived the conflict, but a 12-year-old girl was seen crying after she learned that her best friend had perished. It's really sad to know my friend has died. I was looking forward to this day to begin school, which was supposed to be a happy day. School officials say many students will receive consoling before regular studies get underway in two weeks. Residents left homeless in the conflict have been occupying some school buildings. Twenty schools in Gaza are still serving as shelters for 66,000 people. Organizers in Scotland have staged heated campaigns four days before a referendum to decide whether the country should go its own way. I am Scottish and therefore not British. The decisions for Scotland are best taken by the people who live and work in Scotland. I'm voting no because it's important that Scotland remains part of the UK for our financial and economic stability. The Scottish National Party is calling for independence from the United Kingdom. Deputy Leader Nicola Sturgeon said in Glasgow that Scots should be able to decide their own future. It is no longer good enough for this country to be bystanders in the big decisions that shape our future. We need to put ourselves in the driving seat of those decisions. Former British Finance Minister Alistair Darling is leading the movement to remain in the UK. He told the BBC that independence would trigger economic upheaval. We can have the change that we want within the framework of the United Kingdom, a stronger Scottish Parliament and safeguarding our pensions, our health service as well as jobs. With less than a week to go, opinion polls show differing results, although by very narrow margins. One suggests a majority of Scots wants independence. Another survey shows opponents outnumbering supporters. During the crisis at the Fukushima nuclear plant, authorities set up no entry zones in areas where high levels of radiation were detected. The move disrupted the lives of thousands of residents. It also seriously inconvenienced motorists who had to detour around the barriers. However, authorities have provided some relief by lifting a restriction on a stretch of road near the Fukushima Daiichi plant. Residents hope the move will mark a step toward the region's recovery. The authorities lifted the restriction on midnight Sunday after completing decontamination and repair work. The 14-kilometer stretch cuts right through the no-entry zone and connects the towns of Namie and Tomioka. Before, only vehicles with special permission were allowed through. Now it's open to all cars and trucks. One resident who works at a temporary shopping area is happy to see more traffic. I'm seeing more cars coming from other prefectures already. I hope the road opening will help the area recover. Motorcycles, bicycles and pedestrians are still barred from traveling on the section of road. 
Motorists are also not allowed to get out of their vehicles. Today, Monday, is a national holiday in Japan, Respect for the Aged Day. To mark the event, the government released a set of data to remind everyone of how the country's population is aging at record levels. The survey shows that for the first time, one in eight Japanese people is 75 or older. The Internal Affairs Ministry says roughly 33 million people are aged 65 or older, up 1.1 million from a year ago, marking a record high. Most, 18.8 million, are women. 14.2 million are men. The ministry says this group now makes up 26 percent of Japan's population, and nearly half of them are aged 75 or older, numbering 16 million, another record high. Many people of retirement age continue to work. The ministry says nearly 6.4 million of the 65 or older crowd have jobs marking the 10th yearly rise. They account for 10 percent of the country's workforce. And both the number and percentage of these people are at the highest levels on record. Weather-wise, it's cloudy, partly fair here in Tokyo. Here on Newsline, we wrap up with a look at the extended world weather outlook. That was NHK World's Roundup of News for this hour. I'm James Ting on in Tokyo. Thanks for watching. Stay with us. There's more to come here on NHK World. the coast of Nagasaki Prefecture in western Kyushu. The warm currents flowing around these islands create a temperate climate year-round. This is a popular stopover for many migrating creatures. Let's take a look at the many travelers who visit Fukuejima in autumn. There are about 140 islands west of the mainland of Nagasaki Prefecture. These are collectively known as the Goto Archipelago. The southernmost of these is Fukuejima. It's the largest island in the group with a population of 40,000.
The warm Tsushima current flowing through here provides a temperate climate for the islands. The annual average temperature on Fukuejima is about 17 degrees Celsius. Situated close to the Eurasian continent, Fukuejima has long prospered as a way station on the route linking China and Japan. 10 Here is another small perennial from the Astacea family. This rare member of the bellflower family is found only in a limited area. Autumn sees many visitors to the island. This mimic butterfly, resident to many tropical areas, is brought here by the monsoon. The great egg fly, also commonly found across Southeast Asia. Its damaged wing bears witness to the hard journey it has taken. More than 250 species of birds can also be found across the island year-round. Autumn sees the migration season for these creatures. Chestnut-cheeked starlings are on their way back to their wintering place in Southeast Asia. Fukuejima acts as an important stopover spot for them. Many black objects appear from the clouds. Their numbers grow steadily. Descending slowly, this large group of birds circles above the island. The bee larva eating oriental honey buzzard. This bird of prey has a wingspan of more than a meter. Spending the summer months in Japan, these migratory birds will travel to the Eurasian continent for autumn.